you know, usually people start with introduction. That's what I usually don't do. I do it uh, at the very end of presentation, but let's start with this. So that's me, Vietnamese guy. Um, I'm based in Prague, so that's why I'm speaking English, not, not Latvian or Lithuanian or, or any other language. Uh, that's my colleague, uh, Maxim from Russia, who will present, uh, who will do the, the second and third part of the presentation. He's not here, obviously. Maybe he's hiding somewhere, but he's do, he will do it uh, online, and that's the guy behind. Responsible yeah, for right? the beers. <laughs> yes. He's delivering beers. You <laughs> have of the time. You have? For now? Uh, in a actually, <laughs> in a trunk. Yeah. But so uh, next yeah, time we bring it to, to. I'm based in Riga, and that's probably what you need to a little bit need to know. That that's the closest <coughs> office to Vilnius we have uh, for here technology. Yeah. So in case you would like to get in touch with us, it might be me, it might be Maxim, it might be uh, most likely Martin. So it's up to you. Do you know the, the company? I mean, uh, here, Technologies? Yes. <coughs> I should skip for uh, half of my presentation. Um, in general, you know, we pre uh, created maps in the, uh, in the past, but now it's something slightly different. We focus on location technology in general. Um, I will show you one video, a few videos during the presentation, and Maxim will do the same. Uh, the first one is somehow related to what we do, why, and so on. Everything we do is based on impulses from the world around us. How to communicate and where to go. Our lives and reality are in a continuous cycle of ever-growing change, opportunity, and meaning. Unlocking the potential of information with the power of location. Connecting where we are with the data we need to make better decisions give better answers and open up new perspectives. Finding together that missing piece of significance that helps unfold our reality. This is what we are here for. Because in a world where data is paramount, we are determined to release its enabling power and provide meaningful context. In an open, honest, and transparent way. One that lets us better learn, move, and economically interact with each other in the world around us. We see the potential of location to have a significant impact on solving global questions like environmental pressure or even on improved food distribution and a healthier, more productive future. It's a challenge that we meet with courage, insight, and not business as usual. We look forward to making a lasting difference, acting with curiosity, pride, and a sense of global purpose and helping us all lead safer, more informed, and sustainable lives together. So that was kind of a short introduction. Um, I didn't mention that, uh, actually I mentioned somehow, that uh, we split uh, this uh, workshop in three parts. First, which would be done by me, is kind of uh, theoretical, like inside what we do, why, and uh, with some focus on one, specific topic. Second one would be related to XYZ introduction and the last one would be uh, doing something really. So uh, basically um, for those who don't know us, maybe for those who know us, uh, why do you know us? How because you find we were out? here maybe one year ago. Maybe not you but your colleagues. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> In February? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so you you will you were there. Yeah. Also, you had a presentation. All the maps, all the maps. I'm Interesting. Still using the maps, I'm still using Nokia. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Points. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, as you know, probably uh, well, you or all somehow geographers or people uh, connected to geography, cartography, whatever. Uh, those people usually like traveling. So in that case, um, you all can use the DF, which is online, I'm sorry, uh, which can be offline. Uh, you can download our uh, maps and so on and so on and use it everywhere. 
uh, we cover basically the whole world, which means roughly 200 countries, but I just found out that it might be just 196, depending on countries like Kosovo and so on. Uh, but we do have them. Uh, on the other hand, you can use also the data in, or you can see our data in uh, vehicles, mostly. That was the, 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 our, our core in the past. So in, in general, the question is, by the way, do you have any, uh, any of you a car with navigation system built in? No? No, we all know that we don't need a navigation system. Interesting, yeah. I've been to Vilnius, let's say, four times already, and we got lost somehow. <laughs> I mean, not got lost because we actually we got stuck in the, in the yeah, center. Yeah. Um, anyway, basically, four up to four and a half vehicles of five I use our maps. So it basically means uh, 80, 85, 90 percent of four vehicles with, with built-in navigation, which is quite a lot, I, I would say. So in general, it might be roughly around. Uh, 40% of all vehicles produced and sold. Um, at this moment, we have around 9,000 9, people around the world in, in uh, 56 mm -hmm. offices, uh, sorry, 56 countries, 200 offices, more or less. So we are basically everywhere, except for Lithuania, because we have uh, guys in Riga. Um, we also do our data collection. Um, I guess you studied geography, cartography, you did some data collection, right, during your studies. Uh, we do it by, with our vehicles. They, they, they have those sliders and sensors and so on and so on. Uh, it usually generates and collects approximately seven up to, uh, six up to seven hundred thousand uh, points per second. Um, we create uh, HD maps, not just, you know, road, uh, points uh, of interest, uh, uh, point addresses, but we do also create AG maps for autonomous vehicles. It's, it's you know, those 3D maps, basically. Um, as I mentioned before, we, we give our data to our customers, mostly OEMs, car makers, and three of them, you could see at the very beginning, Mercedes, Audi, and Daimler are our owners at the same time. So we used to be Nokia, we used to be Naftec, now we are here owned by German car makers, Bosch, Continental, Intel, I guess you also know Intel, and this, this kind of companies. Um, that's one part. And on, on the other hand, we also produce maps for other companies. Maybe you know Bing, Bing Maps from Microsoft, maybe you, some of you, maybe you use Facebook. <laughs> they also use our maps for Garmin. They used to be quite, you know, very popular uh, navigation producer or purchase of navigation systems. So they also use our maps. Um, as you can see, it's not just about you know getting from point A to point B, uh, but it's also about some other solutions and options. So there are lots of options, and if I would talk about every single of them, we would probably never leave this, this, this uh, room. So, I already mentioned automotive, transport and logistics, and so on, it goes to public sector, uh, and telco and utilities, internet and media, and so on and so on. There are lots of, lots of uh, errors we can view, uh, or you can use our data, or uh, somehow work with that. But, as you hopefully could read, program, right? We focused on only one topic, which is urban mobility. So hopefully you are interested in that. <laughs> um, we decided to, uh, to focus on this one because it's quite important and interesting for everybody. Basically. Everybody uses more, um, public transport, everybody uses roads, everybody uses uh, bike, uh, walks, and so on and so on. Urban, urban mobility is all about this movement. Basically. Um, on the other hand, I guess you recognize this place. By the way, is there anybody not from Vilnius? Right. Okay. <laughs> you both, fine. 
Um, so as you can see, you know, there are lots of vehicles coming from nowhere, going nowhere basically, or somewhere. Uh, but movement or mobility itself is not about movement, you know. For many people, um, um, moving is about efficiency. And efficiency is usually transferred into speed. So how fast we can get from point A to point B? That's the basic question for most of us. But at the end, many people don't realize that it's not about you know moving from a, uh, point A to B just to be there, uh, but it's all about getting to that point. You know, it's all about uh, some something different. And as you can see, you know, you can put a starting point, you can put an ending point. Um, then you can select the fastest, or the shortest road. By the way, we stayed somewhere here and tried to get there. It took us one and a half hours or something today. What? <laughs> yeah. In which time? Um, three hours ago, more or less. Two hours ago? Yeah. Really? One hour? There was something okay. happening. Maybe a crash? No, no, that there was some, some happening or events, some, some ah. protestants against something, rebel <laughs> or whatever. Sir? Um, anyway. <laughs> we didn't know that, but uh, we used uh, here maps, we used base, and you know it was like go there, no, no, ah, go there. There is one way. Suddenly, so it's not about you know moving. It's about getting getting to that point. It's about one thing, which is access, access to to something, to people, to to uh, jobs, basically. Uh, and it's in general all about access. But on the other hand, you know, uh, if you talk about cities, like cities of the future, you call it, uh, you can end up in this or that somehow. So this is basically the, the current situation in many cities. But uh, it's being said that in uh, 2050, let's say in 30 years, there will be uh, up to 70% of all whole population of the world living in cities. So it means that they are obviously becoming much bigger and much, much, uh, you know, tougher for living at the end. So uh, cities of the future, in some cases, uh, are being considered from, uh, let's say, mobility perspective. Uh, you know, as you can see, streets are empty. You know, everybody wants to use uh, electric vehicles, everybody wants to use uh, car sharing, bike sharing, and this kind of stuff. But on the other hand, it's, um, it's again being said there are some, some researches that uh, up to 15% of whole uh, area of cities are streets, which means a lot. In some cities like Los Angeles, they decided to, to change it somehow because uh, streets are being used by vehicles, obviously. Vehicles uh, are bad at this moment you know, for many people, but at the end, um, uh, they decided to change it somehow. They call it uh, movable streets. Maybe you, some of you heard about it? No? Question. What do you think means? I don't want to ask you. <laughs> any, any idea? Movable streets? Don't look at the picture. It will not help you. <laughs> quite interesting because uh, municipal representatives usually don't think about it. They even don't think that it might work. But in some cities, like Los Angeles I mentioned, it already, it, it already works. And uh, in general it's about uh, changing, changing status of roads or streets during the day. So in the morning you can use streets for you know, public transport, transport, for breakfast, for people having breakfast. Uh, Around noon, you can use it for having lunch. You know, not not vehicles because you know, people don't want to sit in the middle of street and you know in the middle of traffic. Uh, you can you can use it for delivery stuff. You know, um, and so on and so on. In the night or in in the afternoon, you can use it for uh, like a playground for kids, and that's it. And night, obviously, drinking, partying, and <coughs> again delivering something. So, in general, streets can be used in many different ways. Uh, 
but at the end, uh, if municipality itself decides to, to do something like this, um, it usually doesn't work for one reason, uh, because because it all uh, requires data, information. If you don't know about it, you will never. It will never aff affect you somehow. So you will never use it. You will never go there because you don't know. Uh, in that uh, Los Angeles case, they are sharing it via API. I guess you know what API means. Um, so it means that uh, the data is available for everybody. Everybody who wants to de uh, develop their own app, their own uh, idea, solution, whatever, uh, they can use it. So uh, whenever you want to go there, your app will tell you, OK, there is this situation, and so on and so on. Um, our approach is um, definitely the same. And we believe that uh, data, it's all about data. There's never been a tipping point quite like this. A new digital era where man and technology fundamentally reconfigure their relationship to empower every aspect of our surroundings. Where we go from ride sharing to self-driving, from delivery to drone, from city planning to thinking cities. From street maps to an index of reality. This era is called the autonomous world. At Here Technologies, we want everyone to benefit from an autonomous world. To become a true enabler, a trusted partner, with a collaborative answer to how the future of everything will look, feel, think, and work. We are making this a reality by creating a digital representation of the world that tells us what happens where, when, in the moment, responding and reacting to make all our lives safer and smarter. With more time for what we love, and less needed for what we don't. Our vision, born from the very core of here, will exist in everything we do. An open system that will enable an autonomous world for everyone. Who liked that video? The mission. No one. Okay. <laughs> uh, in general, you know, uh, when we started working for, for at the time NAFTEC, I mean, me and Martins, uh, let's say 11 or already 12 years ago, uh, at the time we did data collection, and it was it, you know, we just drove roads, streets, and did collection, and, you know, collected uh, some attributes, few attributes, like uh, speed limits, uh, turn restrictions, and uh, access restrictions, and that was it. Regarding POIs, we collected um, restaurants, hotels, and something like like this. Basically, re something related to navigation itself for drivers, not for people. Um, now it's completely different, as you can see. You know, it's not about X and Y. It's also about Z, because you can use drones. You can use drones for delivery stuff, and so on, and so on. Um, everything is connected. Public transport via API, so uh, you can easily know uh, that there are some delays of, of um, buses or something. There are some um, other connections, like weather, uh, because it's also quite important, let's say, for drones, for everything, especially uh, in some cities, in some countries. Um, in Finland, we have some, some collaboration with local municipalities, local government, uh, creating some, some applications for, you know, the inform drivers, uh, when there is some specific situation, especially in Finland, mostly about animals, you know. Um, but in general, it's all about location, you know, and we believe that location is that, that glue which connects all the, all the stuff together. Um, when it comes to urban mobility, um, we are thinking about that somehow, surprisingly, as, as many companies have been doing. 
quite heavily. In our case, uh, we focused on um, on that from, let's say, a little bit complex uh, perspective because many people just take it, develop an app for public transport, and that's it. You know. um, they may not care about about that weather. They don't care about uh, something 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 extra like traffic, uh, real time traffic. But in our case, we uh, try to figure out what's uh, important for cities, why they have been doing what they have been doing. In some cases, they even don't know. Uh, in many cases, I would say. Um, and if there is a way how to improve it. So we took roughly 30, 40 cities around the world. I will show, show the map in the, in the, in the second. Uh, looked at the data from several different perspectives. Connect, connectivity, sustainability, affordability, and innovation. Um, we took our data, combined them with op uh, open data or data from our suppliers, and then um, we, let's say, created um, the index which we call Urban Mobility Index. Maybe it's just one number, actually. It's not just one number, but a uh, collection of different uh, statistics. So this is the list of, not list, the map of, of uh, all the cities we focused on at this moment. Unfortunately, there is no Vilnius at this moment, but I will focus on one city. You can choose. Berlin. Perfect, because I prepared just Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but let's start with Berlin. So uh, have you been to Berlin? All of you? Perfect. So you know how it looks like. Uh, in general, it's just you know flat, flat terrain. Nothing, nothing extra. The highest point is around 120 meters above sea, which is like nothing. It's, uh, I'm from Prague. In Prague, the, the lowest point is 195 or something. I guess really it's the, the same. Uh, in general, there are roughly three and 0.75. Uh, 750,000 inhabitants, area roughly 900 kilometers. Uh, blah blah blah. I guess you you all know, or you should all know actually, because you are geographers, and you are, I guess you study that somehow. But that part which is quite important for for uh, the urban mobility index is uh, public transport and also income, because that's something what also matters. As you could see on, on that map, we had lots of lots of cities in um, in countries like India, uh, Brazil, and so on, where, where there are big differences between you know incomes. There are rich people and very poor people, so that's something what really matters. Um, in general, they have S-Bahn, they have U-Bahn, they have uh, trams, buses, and so on, and so on. Uh, when it comes to connectivity, um, that's that. Uh, you could see places where, I mean, all those uh, are stops, public transit stops, trains, whatever. So as you could see, there are even places where um, there are up to 6,000 stops, or uh, we call it trips, which means uh, basically you have a, a public transit stop, and there is, uh, let's say, up to 6,000 stops by bus, train, whatever. I guess you, you understand. So in general, uh, the average number is around 400, five, uh, four, 450 trips per stop per day, which means quite a lot. But on the other hand, you can see all those uh, small uh, like dots uh, on the map, which are being served once a day or twice a day or something. Um, in general, if you, if, we, if you compare it to, to, to the rest of the cities, they are they are in top three, which is nice number. Um, there are definitely much much more cities and much with much more uh, big uh, worse. Is too much worse uh, uh, situation, but Berlin is quite uh, it is doing quite well. Uh, when it comes to uh, coverage. Uh, and density of, of public transit stops, obviously city center is uh, the big one, I mean the, the most dense area, 
and so on and so on. But it, as you can see, it's quite, uh, again, quite well covered. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to number of uh, stops per 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 people, it's quite low. I mean, even less than, than one stop per 1,000 uh, 1, people. Um, it's not about public, public transport uh, only, but it's also about uh, congestion, uh, traffic jams, basically. So uh, we just took our data, data from our, our suppliers, and as you can see, uh, these are dates uh, and hours. No, no dates, but days and hours. So I just uh, highlighted, uh, um, let's say, peak period on Friday. And as you can see, that 50% is uh, the number of roads which are being full effect of vehicles. And in Berlin, especially in Berlin, they you know they all believe most of them believe that it should change somehow. They you know they are fans of, of bikes and so on, car sharing and this kind of um, alternative means of transport. But at the end it means that you will basically spend twenty up to twenty five minutes per one hundred kilometers in a traffic jam. Which is quite a lot. It's if you, uh, I don't know if you travel by car to to the school or to your work. Do you? Yes. How much time do you take? Six minutes. Six uh, minutes. Yeah, from home to work. And do you have any traffic jam potential on on the way? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. And how much? How long it might take? Uh, how much traffic back my? Home? Yeah. Maybe ten minutes plus. So basically twice more. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. So at the end, uh, you know, if you if you decide to count all those minutes spent in vehicle somewhere waiting for something, you know, uh, you will realize it's it's waste of time. Um, if we compare Berlin to other cities, um, they are doing quite well in this uh, in this attribute or in this uh, area. When it comes to sustainability, we focused on uh, green prices and low emission zones. Uh, when it comes to green uh, places, which means forests, uh, parks, um, river, something like this, and so on and so on. Again, it's just um, Berlin, as you can see, 27%, but at the end, uh, they are fourth which is quite a lot. I would say uh, when it comes to that percentage, it's quite low, but at the end, uh, it's still better than many of many other cities. And when it comes to um, low emission zones, it's again, I'm, I'm quite sure it's, it's not the case of let's say, central and east, east European cities at this moment. So uh, they are doing quite well in this case. Um, <clears throat> when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to affordability, it's, it's related to money. So, as you can see, uh, in Berlin, Germany, you probably earn um, quite a lot of money, roughly 2,000 euros per, per month. I mean, that's, that's the average. Uh, but if you, if you compare it to public transport uh, prices and so on, and prices for fuel, uh, it might be quite you know, difficult to, to even spend that money. <clears throat> yes, we skip at this moment. Uh, we are coming to the end. So, in general, as you can see, there are lots of uh, lots of things you can uh, consider. Um, there is one developer, right? Anyone? Anybody else? Not at this moment, but it, it can easily change. I mean. Um, most our let's say most Central European city uh, countries are called developer paradise, let's say, because there are lots of people focusing on new stuff, uh, uh, starting their own startups and so on and so on. Uh, in our case, we developed the app, obviously using some some of the data you, you could see before, but you could do the, uh, you could do the same. Everybody can do the same. Yeah. You can use our data for that including uh, traffic places, uh, transit, and so on and so on. But you can also combine it with other data, as, as obviously uh, the case. And as Maxim would talk about. So, 
That's my part. Finally. <laughs> now you got rid of me. Uh, any questions? Don't be shy. Come on, please ask. <laughs> no? Maxim, are you there? Obviously, I don't have to continue. Sorry. Uh, Wi-Fi. Do you remember the password for Wi-Fi? It's not the code. No, it's all numbers. And 2019. It was not big. Did we look at this? Um, Conferencia? Yes. Conferencia. And then capital on uh, small letters, 2019. I use the different one. Actually, there are two conferences here, yeah, five five. With small, uh, small. Um, too late. <laughs> so it's small letters conference. Okay. So. Hey guys, so uh, ask questions because uh, there is there is no. No stupid questions. I mean, there is so many, so many uh, information. Sometimes, in it, so. Maxim, can you hear us? I would say it's it's, it's yes, yes. It's Perfect. in your interest to ask these questions. Uh, because some questions are didn't work for some yeah, some reason. Just oh, okay. Go now. So, so now, yes. Okay, let's start. You can start, I guess. Ready? Yes, yes. Serious? Yes, <laughs> yes. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> So you can, I guess. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> Let me move you to the opposite. <laughs> so you can see me, yes? No. No? We can see your presentation, uh, but you are on the opposite screen. <coughs> right here. Ah, oh, OK. Now we can we can see you, unfortunately. Hello to everybody. My name is Maxim Makarov. Uh, uh, mostly uh, my work in, uh, here is connected with uh, developers, but uh, today we are going to explore some interesting thing which uh, uh, doesn't need uh, from you any coding skills. Uh, as Martin said, uh, our topic is uh, urban mobility and today we are going to develop uh, application for urban mobility uh, for urban mobility. So my part uh, is uh, uh, connected with uh, I think uh, theoretical part and um, practical. So uh, we will explore, explore how to develop the application and uh, we will use QGIS for this task. But let's start from the beginning. Uh, uh, I hope everyone from you knows that uh, location plays a really critical role in any sphere of our life. Uh, we can take economy, industry or agriculture. Everywhere we can <coughs> create really uh, good and cool solutions to optimize some processes uh, and create uh, different applications in these spheres. Uh, but uh, people uh, in this sphere face really complex problems uh, with what? Uh, any open data portal uh, inputs uh, data in spreadsheets. So for people it's complex to uh, take this data manage it, uh, publish somewhere, and uh, share a, a link to somebody, to their boss, or share a link to friends. Uh, it depends on your tasks. So, uh, uh, for me, uh, as a developer, uh, I understand that I need to have uh, my own server, I need to have database, uh, deploy it somewhere, and uh, after that only I can publish some data. Uh, but 
uh, you don't need uh, the steps if you use uh, the solution here it's uh, and uh, let's look uh, what is it here it's is a uh, location uh, a geolocation cloud based platform where you can store your data anytime you want and of course publish um, works in real time so if you do any changes uh, in your account uh, and uh, 5,000 people have this link that you share uh, all edits uh, will be changed in real time so it's very powerful tool uh, but what you really can develop what really you can do with this platform first of all it's a basic interactive map uh, on hostings which you can share with anybody there you can manage your data, as I said, and store uh, in special attribute table. So each database, uh, uh, we name them uh, spaces. Each space can be deleted, updated, uh, so uh, you can create them as much, as many as you want. And finally, uh, all these manipulation, manipulations with data can be used uh, in mobile application, in web application, whenever you want. Um, for example, uh, I use this platform in mobile development, uh, so I visualize data from Hub uh, in mobile application. So it's just a basic example. Uh, for who this platform? Uh, for all people, map enthusiasts, who even not familiar with cartography or with development. So they can easily uh, learn how to use this platform. Uh, of course, for cartographers, and uh, if they know how to use common line interface, so it's another tool. It's the next level of knowing. So you can uh, manage data in cloud from your local computer. Uh, and for developers, uh, you, as I said, uh, mobile applications and web applications can have direct connection to the hub uh, or repository like a storage. Um, let's look uh, what, how it looks like. Uh, it's a basic interface of XYZ Studio, like a, it's like a constructor of uh, web maps. Uh, where you see that we created the title of the project, uh, we have several layers and each layer uh, you can select from your uh, storage from your database you can then edit this data then uh, it's an example of open source usage uh, with uh, xyz hub here uh, we use leaflet open source javascript library for visualizing data from the cloud it's also possible and it's okay for us to use any other software so it's uh, depends on your needs and uh, uh, my, the best is uh, I think solution I like it it's a real-time application for tracking flights uh, as I said uh, it works in real time so uh, you can update data in hub using REST API and all updates will appear in real time so let's explore uh, deep deeper uh, ESCLI, Command Line Interface, and Hub API. Uh, here is a quick description uh, of these uh, technologies. Uh, Command Line Interface enables efficient interaction with uh, Hub from your local computer, and it's ready to use direct access from any place, from any device you want. Uh, data formats which you can upload to the Hub. Uh, you can use GeoJSON, Shapefile, uh, CSV, or JSON and upload any volume of the data. For example, I have Shapefile uh, with volume of 5 GB. It's possible to upload this data to cloud using uh, here CLI. Uh, also, it's possible with another XYZ uh, tool here API, but Using this service, uh, you can uh, create uh, like another tools like search. So you can search in the in your layers 
uh, search by bounding box, uh, you can iterate all objects in your layer and uh, select only those you, you need by text. So it's very flexible and very useful in the world. Uh, here are examples uh, uh, of how uh, data from Excel can be used. So any rendering engine you want. Visualize your data in QGIS or ArcGIS. Uh, upload data from this desktop software to the cloud. Or if you're a developer, you can use uh, third-party libraries like Free.js or Liquid, uh, any others, uh, and uh, visualize data from the cloud. Uh, who and how can you use this platform? Do you need to pay? Of course, no. So premium packet, uh, premium account, uh, you can get it by registering on the platform and uh, you can use it for science, for education, for small projects, uh, so it's completely free. Uh, it includes 5 gigabytes of data to store and uh, 2, uh, two and half gigabytes of data transfer. So, uh, I think it's enough and I use this account uh, in my usual work so yeah, I don't even need to have a pro account okay so if you have uh, at the moment any questions uh, concerning the theoretical, theoretical part uh, you, have, uh, you can ask uh, and then we will start uh, our practical part we are going to develop web application uh, you can scan QR code or go via link where you can find a uh, online tutorial, of course, if you have a uh, laptop. So now, who uh, wants and uh, I would think for your questions. Anyone, anyone wants to try it, at least? Okay. I tried it actually. Already? Uh, yeah, <coughs> and it didn't really work for me. Actually, it happened that it worked, but I have troubles um, of saving in CSV and trying to achieve files uh, with a little bit of help from colleagues from last year. Um, I actually wanted just to map all the poles of the Windows, um, like lightning poles, mm -hmm. because I work for Windows map for lightning. I uh, tried just to map all the all the poles uh, in, in Windows and uh, I had the troubles. I said, I would say that it's not really user friendly. Like, if, I don't know. If, for example, I could just put in shape file. It was, it was just a little bit hard to do. But uh, and uh, I don't know. Um, I, if I could contact me, maybe Maxim. Uh, Definitely. Uh, uh, did you hear Maxim? Did you hear the question or comment? Uh, uh, I just uh, heard that uh, yeah, yeah. it is out to connect. Um, yeah. I will write just uh, email maybe. You can, you can uh, because because I've, I've, it's it's the process already started, but we I haven't finished. Maybe later on I can just. Uh, so in general, you had uh, an issue with preparation of sh uh, shape file or CSV. Yeah, which yeah, can yeah. Be I tried added. both ways, and okay. uh, um, I don't remember. I don't remember. Which platform? Because you have Studio and XYZ, or is it the same? Basically the same. Okay. I mean, um, yeah. Because I tried on both, okay. and, uh, and uh, later I gave up just uh, on, on, on one work, but I wanted some extra things, and mm. it was crashing all the time, or something wrong with the file, and later I gave up. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. Uh, in general, my experience is that uh, you know CSV files are, if you work with them in let's say Excel, All right. uh, it's quite okay. But there is you know you have to set up somehow you know uh, body of columns somehow mm -hmm. or uh, yeah. Save it as TXT and maybe. Maybe I mean um, something might be as a text, something might be as a number or something, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's quite difficult to to. Uh, so what do you recommend, shapefile? Shapefile might be better, I would say. Uh, is it a, any conversion? Uh, or GML? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry. Um, I mean for conversion from uh, coordinates in, in the 
for example, I'm using LKS. Can mm -hmm. I convert? Uh, can I, for example, put shape file with LKS and then later uh, transfer to uh, convert to? In in in. Oh no. Yes, yes. Can I ask for just yeah, uh, this sure. question? So uh, at the moment, uh, platform supports uh, only uploading shape files using command line interface. So uh, then about CSV files, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, CSV files should uh, contain uh, latitude and longitude forms. Uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, everyone knows it. So if you have only Arduin, Arduin's column uh, in your file, so it uh, won't work. Uh, using here CLI, you can convert uh, files, CSV file to GeoJSON and uh, then upload it to the hub by using the user interface like in the XFZ Studio. So, yes. But of course, back to back, it's also feedback. Uh, yes, uh, uh, some uh, problems to uh, this pass at the moment, uh, and, uh, but uh, I think that uh, it improves uh, day by day. So I've created a tutorial two days ago and now he, this platform is updated so uh, developers are updating uh, it uh, yes, uh, I hope uh, in future uh, user interface will be more friendly to people and uh, uh, it will be possible to upload shape file using um, the data of user interface I'm quite sure that you will get to that point but uh, it's uh, well, the plan is somehow to make it kind of open source, uh, which means that basically... Well, the interface is at the moment open source, yeah. uh, it's it, uh, in uh, Node.js, uh, and uh, it's possible to uh, make your edits, write your code, and uh, push it to GitHub, and for the developers to see is it okay, and uh, they can commit the changes. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, of course, our, uh, they also wanted to make this uh, platform open source, uh, but it's hard. It's hard for company business uh, location data to make it completely free. So that's, uh, that's the reason why this platform is completely free, but it's a great step uh, uh, that uh, um, this platform is somehow connected with QGIS. Uh, it's possible to make projects in uh, QGIS and upload it at the app and quickly publish. So that's what we are going to play. So you plan to use it basically? Uh, uh, or try to work with them. Um, anybody else? Comments, questions at this moment? Um, as Maxim said, you can use it whenever you want. You you just register and that's it. Uh, it's connected to uh, directed to um, our developer portal where you can get all those APIs uh, we can we publish. And again, it's uh, there are just you know two options like premium of and freemium. Freemium is obviously for free. Uh, it's up to one one hundred thousand transactions. The question is what it means, but but uh, at this moment it doesn't matter. Um, but you can get access to our routing API, real-time traffic API, all those you know waypoints. Uh, you can, if you plan to develop or your company plans to develop something related to fleet management, you can also that's that thing. Geo geofencing also quite quite useful. Uh, geocoding and the reverse geocoding, which means you have an address. It turns into uh, Coordinates. Actually, example. I don't know. If, uh, yesterday, I was in the municipality, and um, and Venice municipality has starting to to create a policy of Internet of Things mm -hmm. and create a like universal uh, like like this that it will be universal policy for Internet of Things, and I think the organization would be interesting actually in the municipality. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. Actually, we just yesterday we had the meeting with uh, 
Lithuanian World Army, Lithuanian World Army, because they are our supplier. Uh, we also collaborate on uh, one European project, which is called CNITS, which is basically all about sharing traffic science information or traffic science uh, data with uh, map makers like us, TomTom, Tom, um, maybe even Apple one day, and so on and so on, because the, the main purpose is to basically share this kind of data uh, and give it to, directly to drivers. Because traffic sites are not there because you know someone wants to, they are because of uh, protection of other people, uh, restrictions, and so on and so on. Uh, and, just, I want, oh, okay. second, uh, and the, uh, we also discussed some collaboration with them and municipalities somehow uh, doing data collection, so it might be some, some starting point. And I also wanted to ask Maxim if uh, we are planning more, like maybe some project for our <coughs> Oh no, or is it like S3 is that? Uh, uh, S3 is one of our customers, actually quite quite heavily depending on our data. So whenever you use uh, S3 maps, it's our maps. Uh, uh, on the uh, other hand, uh, S3 in general is kind of, you know, competitor. In some sense, maybe yes, I would say. But because it's why it's also... And really bad up this. Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure that uh, at the moment we have such a uh, plan to develop uh, RGS pattern, but uh, uh, it's a good practice uh, for you or me also to make it uh, by ourselves because RGS uh, has a uh, uh, Python extension, a Python console, and uh, uh, REST uh, API, uh, Data Hub API. Uh, helps uh, or can like, uh, be very helpful in this case. So it's possible to create uh, own plugin uh, for this case for RGS, uh, Light and QGIS. But uh, I don't have a, I don't know uh, any about any plans of developing such plugin for its version for RGS. Um, I don't know if some of you use Q QGIS. We used before, like, uh, but we moved to actually to RTS. Just because, just because the same similar, similar platform between mm -hmm. municipalities. That's that's the thing. Yeah. Interesting. But I tried not to move I tried to uh, want to use it. It moved forward a little bit. Yeah, I've been following so moving. But RTS is just that. Uh, Real-time data through portal is uh, between different companies, and real-time is very, very, very easy and uh, yeah. just to share the data. That's 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 a good thing, and uh, also very secure. Yeah. That's fine. Very expensive. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, as well. Yeah, and that's the issue. I mean, uh, we definitely talk to. Uh, governmental institutions, municipalities, and so on, in many countries. And uh, our experience is that they are kind of turning into, uh, you know, going into QGIS, like to next door, basically, mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons. Because, you know, uh, there are now quite a lot of people, you know, not supporting, supporting, let's say, commercial companies like S3 mm -hmm. and so on, uh, because QGIS is obviously for free at least, uh, the basic stuff. Um, especially, I guess you also had some GIS days recently. Um, I attended a GIS day in Br Bratislava. It was all about you know QGIS and open source uh, so software and, and tools and so on. So, on. so my feeling that uh, municipalities or this kind of organizations, let's say, are going in the direction for some reason. Uh, even in even universities, but uh, it's also up to up to people um, if they are strictly against S3 or uh, supporting S3. Mm. Uh, but it's happening everywhere. I mean, uh, everybody adored Google a few years ago because they had Maps for free. They had you know all those ser services. But now everybody want uh, the, uh, you know is kind of scared of being uh, tracked, and now. Uh, just yesterday I read an article that, that um, some 
Amnesty International actually accused them, Google and Facebook, of you know selling data. I mean, selling private data. Actually, so, I never was a fan of, of uh, Google Maps. I was always uh, kind of uh, Obi, uh, Care Maps, and uh, where you go. But uh, and was talking about Google. Why is that it didn't like? I was in Google conference in Riga. Uh, they they had map map maker, mm -hmm. and I just, uh, I just wanted to try. I I I know digitized just a leg, like uh, and, and they approved, and it was just a triangle, and the, from data point, Google Map is just awful, and uh, and I always say don't use Google Maps professionals. Don't use Google Maps. Maybe from like, but but I mean. He has started with LiDAR data. That was that was uh, that was a huge, huge impact on Tinker Talk in, ger in general. Uh, but uh, for for masses, you, you see Google Street View. Yeah. That's uh, of course right now Apple area, so it has uh, with, uh, with these things. But uh, Google Street uh, Google Street View for very common people. Uh, common people is very uh, just. Just uh, this maps made uh, easy. Also, Google is enormous because on the indexation, they have all addresses. Yeah. So that's why. Anyway, uh, we don't. I don't, don't want to take uh, Maxim's time. So okay. please continue. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so uh, okay, uh, I would like to show you how to develop uh, basic applications so you can open this tutorial anytime you want. Uh, here are quick links uh, where you can explore in details uh, how it is received. And uh, we are going to develop this map. Uh, let's start. Uh, here uh, are some examples uh, how to what is possible to develop, like seismic, act uh, seismic uh, activity in all over the world. Uh, here is an example at how to develop real-time application, uh, which uh, connects um, mobile application with uh, XYZ. Then uh, here is a, an example, if it's not enough for you, uh, XYZ Studio is not enough for you, so we can use our API for JavaScript to create heat maps or other geolocalization uh, things enough, uh, to make it better. Uh, I heard something uh, uh, someone mentioned mentioned uh, tools. So here is an example of Arduino and uh, XYZ visualization. So you can real time uh, push. Uh, points uh, to cloud and uh, then visualize uh, or ecological map uh, to cloud. And finally, it's uh, RGS, QGS project quickly publishing our map. So, uh, let's start. Uh, here is our data for Venus. Uh, I'm going to download it uh, on my desktop. Uh, then uh, we need to extract data. I have already, sorry, I have already prepared uh, these data sets. Uh, so here, these uh, files uh, have extension, have extension GeoJSON. Uh, we are going to work with them. Uh, I made them uh, via QGIS. Next uh, step uh, is uh, opening XYZ Studio. <coughs> I already have an uh, account, so I don't need to register, but uh, from the first step you uh, will need to create account. Here we see basic interface, uh, projects, uh, data hub, uh, documentation and uh, support. In projects you can create uh, any amount of projects, uh, I think, uh, by clicking on this button. Uh, in Data Hub, uh, there are your layers. So each layer can be divided into like a, it's like a 
database. Each database can be divided into uh, tables by text, but uh, we're not going to do it just layers. So let's create uh, first project, uh, and uh, we already have a map uh, which we can publish. Let's uh, make some changes. Uh, change name of this map. Make it urban mobility. And uh, I hope you will add some description of this project. I don't want to waste your time on it. Uh, here we can change uh, our base map. Let's make it like this. And uh, add our data. Uh, so how to upload data. Here we have uh, button for uploading. Just selecting uh, our files and uh, dropping here. Um, a couple of seconds uh, we need to wait uh, for uploading data to the hub. Uh, Rolls, I think, will load a little bit more. Um, and here you can see also XYZ here shared data sets. Uh, so in Microsoft uh, give us these data sets. Uh, they are free. You can try uh, to use them to visualize your first project uh, to see what is it. Uh, so now we are waiting 37% over there. Yes, finally we uploaded data sets and uh, we can see our data on the map. Uh, here our layers, we can change order of them and of course uh, these styles are not uh, perfect for me. I need some customization moment to change them. So I think uh, row stations, uh, bus stations should be on the top. I can click on them. Uh, change style. I think I need to change the name of the style. Bus stations. Okay. And uh, here is the basic customization process. So I can change uh, shape to square. Fill color I will make white. Uh, outline is uh, blue. And uh, I want to have an icon, my custom icon of bus stations, so I select from the list. Uh, change color. Yes, I have bus stations now, but my roads are not so good here. I also want to change all lines style. So let's make them gray and uh, and not and width of this or thickness of these roads should be one. So, uh, now it's better. Uh, two last steps is to change admin boundary of uh, Vilnius, uh, make the, it transparent uh, like this, I think, and uh, change outline to. Black use outline sickness. Uh, final step is to change uh, our railway lines. Here I can see that uh, I will change just sickness. So I finished work on my project. Uh, uh, the last step I need to do uh, is to publish it. Uh, here is a publish settings. Uh, I want to include title of the project, description, uh, I will edit, edit it later, and uh, legend. After that, I can share my project, project via link uh, by opening URL or include iframe into my website. So if you have landing page, uh, you can easily include this code into your website and uh, map will appear there. So let's try to open our project. Uh, now we see uh, our map is published 
uh, I can add labels by clicking on this uh, point I can see some information here you can also add links uh, to give uh, your users ability to go to the website of, of the shop or explore how many uh, buses are on this uh, bus station bus stop but here you see that I didn't change um, you can change the default line style, etc. So you need to do it if you want to have a legend with legend. Um, in five minutes, we published map. Uh, we uh, made it really easy. If you want to create, uh, if you collect the data or want to collect data in this uh, tool, uh, you can create new layer. Uh, here it is. Uh, each layer we can edit uh, by uh, edit mode uh, with this pencil and uh, uh, for example I want to add some lines uh, I can add polygons so you understood that uh, you can do anything you want uh, but uh, if uh, this tool is not uh, good for you, if this customization tool is not uh, enough for you, uh, you can use uh, QGIS. And now I want to show you how to do it. Uh, let's uh, go to documentation. Uh, in documentation you can uh, find uh, information about all tools connected with XYZ and uh, uh, Tutorial videos, video lessons, uh, where the basics are explained more. Uh, here we can find XYZ API uh, and uh, manage tokens. So all data can be public or private. You want to share it with anybody, so it will be public. Uh, in XYZ token UI. Um, we can uh, manage uh, our data, create tokens. Uh, uh, that means that this layer will be private or public. Uh, here are rules for each layer. I will select all rules. So all these layers will be public, and anyone with who I share my link can manage, read, edit, create data in these layers. So then I can generate token. And uh, generate token. So, yes, it's finished. Uh, in manage tokens, I can find all tokens that I have. And uh, now we need just to copy them. One this. Uh, so, let's go to QJS. Just a minute. Yes. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show in XYZ is that you can download uh, any layer you uh, you add, you upload, or you changing editing. So it's possible to delete or download. So we don't own this data, so it's completely yours. Okay. So let's create new project and uh, in plugins uh, tab. You can find all plugins. Uh, I tap all right XYZ Hub Connector, and uh, that's how you can find uh, plugin communicate with XYZ Hub. Uh, okay, where is it now? Uh, plugin manage. I think we need to. Oh, I had it here. Okay. So I can find it in plugins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, sorry, yes, yes, sorry, yes. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, so here is uh, our plugin, and uh, you remember that we made uh, <coughs> we did this token. So now I can copy it and uh, paste here. Uh, click use, and now I see my all layers in QGIS. Uh, then I want to have base map. Base map. Uh, uh, I can add in map tile section. Uh, every, uh, you need to have special um, application code and ID uh, to add base map, and you can get them at the developer portal. So you can find it uh, here in the documentation uh, in your own account. Uh, projects. Uh, select plan and here is a premium plan here I, here I have ID and I have code so I'm using them here but of course you can use OpenStreetMap any other open uh, base map so it doesn't matter uh, so add map tile and uh, I will add uh, this layer this layer and uh, Ah, sorry, I am not in, in, in load section, sorry. So, loading this section, there, this, and this. Uh, other base maps I think I need to remove. And uh, do a zoom to there. So, we have our data in UGS. We can easily edit it, uh, do anything we want. So here, uh, editing tools are much better. And uh, using this plugin, we can in the same way upload data to the cloud. So using the same uh, port. Sorry. Using the same code. We can upload, uh, we need just to select space where we want to upload, select layer which we want to upload and uh, click uh, on upload button. So that's all, uh, that's all what is connected with uh, QGS and uh, XYZ, you see that it's very easy to do it. And you can do uh, it with shape files, with anything, with any data formats from QGS. So I think it's not a problem. And uh, I don't want to save any changes. I want to just to show another tool. Uh, it's a command line interface about which I was talking about. Uh, I'm opening uh, my command line interface here and uh, write a special command here uh, waiting for getting access and here what we can see I think I hope that you also see it we have operations for uh, managing data with XYZ transforming data from CSV to GeoJSON and shapefile to GeoJSON Geocoding uh, and that's all. So here are managing tools. Yes, so uh, that's all uh, that I wanted to show you. This data then can be used in any web application or mobile application. And uh, uh, now, if you have any questions about platform, about what I showed, so please ask. What's the limit? Data limit. Oh. Ah, okay. So you can store uh, your data in for free. Uh, I think about for about five five gigabyte of data that you can store, and uh, two gigabyte of graph you can transfer. For example, I'm I'm using uh, your application and I'm 
uh, download data from the app, so it's a data transfer. Go and have it right. Hopefully. Any other question, comment? Uh, so, if I, for example, use not your uh, JavaScript API format creation, but for example, Leaflet or Open Layers, so I will, how, in which kind of format I will access uh, the data stored in the XYZ? It's like a, a JSON service, or or do you have maybe like plugin for Leaflet, or or because. You know, if you use Leaflet, it will be really, I think, fine to, to just access the style and everything in, in, in this platform you are working. So, how it will work? So, uh, using uh, Leaflet, uh, uh, you will use REST API and uh, uh, XYZ server return the GeoJSON form. Ah, okay. So, I can show you that uh, if you download uh, data, uh, somewhere here. and it uh, has uh, such structure. Okay. So it will be like uh, a service which which will provide the JSON like in this format, yeah. Uh, can you repeat? It will be the service which will provide this data in JSON format. For example, if I edit in X Y Z then I can access the data in Leaflet uh, directly without downloading the G JSON? Yeah, in, yes, yes, of course. So, yeah. look, uh, I can show one of my tutorials. Okay. Uh, see here, location services, ah, yeah. it's okay. uh, here and Leaflet. So, uh, here is a code. Uh, I created a special link uh, geodata URL. It's uh, a URL uh, using which you can access directly data from the hub. Then uh, I make some manipulations in JavaScript with this data and uh, adding it to map. Okay. Everything works in real time. I made it using real time plugin. So if I make any changes, uh, uh, in the cloud, uh, all people who use my application will see that. Thank you. What else? Uh, no. Any other question? Please, uh, I mean, is there any chance to for you to use it in your work? Is there anybody from, uh, let's see, academic? No, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> Interesting. Um, you know, we usually give it to students who, because they can present their their you know um, stuff. So uh, they don't need to, to create anything, some, some anything super fancy, uh, uh, difficult, and so on, and so on. Um, Maxim, may I ask you one thing? Uh, could you also? Yes share our APIs, what we have, um, and something yes, regarding this. Yes. Uh, if we open our portal, so open here dot com, uh, we have special uh, tab here for developers. And uh, at the bottom we can find developer portal. Uh, for, to start, you can click on the bottom Get Start for free, and uh, uh, I can share what we have uh, in the documentation. So, if it's a location services, so we can use uh, JavaScript API or Android SDK or iOS SDK for create, creating interactive maps. It's like a library uh, for creating uh, maps. And uh, we have our own tile layers and vector layers. Uh, we can select uh, them as a base maps. Uh, weather API, uh, if you're developing application which is depends on weather, for example, uh, I'm, for example, touristic application, um, and which restaurant to visit. 
uh, is it good to go to the nearest or it's a bad weather and uh, I need to select another one so uh, think about it geocoding uh, and uh, batch geocoding so you can uh, by one transaction geocode uh, uh, up to million addresses and uh, it uh, will be done in 30 minutes I think. Uh, and places API and uh, So you can you can do it instead of doing uh, I think we should we should be fine. Uh, we're we're good, but uh, he's he's lost. Seems that he's lost. I and mean, he's back. Oh, 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 can you hear me? Yes, you're yes. back. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, so, so you can repeat it from from the very beginning, I guess. Like <laughs> from the beginning from the workshop, yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, let's start. So today we are going to explore here XYZ. So okay, uh, where what was the last API about which I was talking? Um, no idea. Weather and geocoding. So you basically and you no you showed the places. You showed the places and uh, started ah. to talk something about <coughs> places and then then we got to log. Okay, so about routing API. Uh, we have this tool which you can explore and uh, use it in your everyday work life. Anyway. So, in uh, API, you can just create basic route uh, from A to B. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, let's explore either lines uh, or either fronts. So, you can calculate special geofences uh, based on time. For example, 300 seconds, uh, and uh, let's calculate where I can get from this point. So by car, uh, including traffic, I can get only to these points. And uh, another interesting tool is uh, matrix routing. So we we can set uh, several starting points and several destination points. Uh, it can be up to matrix 10,000 uh, to 10,000. And here we also see the result with the nest. Here are our uh, That's how it works, uh, our API here. Uh, Transit API, uh, we have uh, data for uh, public transport uh, like uh, public transport routes uh, and bus stations uh, so schedule of uh, uh, public transport etc etc large matrix, matrix uh, route about the service uh, I was talking here so it's an example um, just a moment Traffic API, so you can have direct access to traffic, explore uh, what kind of data we have uh, in this service, or you can um, use it like a tile, a tile layer, uh, and uh, in anywhere in QGIS or in your web application. Uh, a lot of services for fleet telematics, uh, like uh, geofencing, when you are uh, trying to understand if your uh, device or car inside special geo zone um, advanced data sets I think it's a service uh, our own nobody in the world in, 
any company give such access to the data. Uh, so here you can find different layers, uh, different like uh, extracts from our database. It's possible to do it in any platform. So any company don't uh, don't give such access to the database. Root matching uh, uh, it's also useful for taxi companies when you have uh, GPS track and you need to understand uh, uh, where was your car on the road uh, because GPS gives approximate uh, value and it can be uh, with errors. Uh, Web API uh, solves a really cool uh, problem when you have uh, five or more ten points uh, and you need to understand uh, where you want to go at first, second, etc. So optimal route uh, for delivery for example. Two visualizations, so it includes uh, different uh, tools uh, like heat map or analyzing CSV data. Uh, Cell data, cell data, and nothing like this. So I hope I will show you. Yes. So some uh, developing applications like this. Okay, okay, and uh, I think the last uh, set of tools. Here you can uh, see uh, XYZ, so you can have direct access to XYZ data from our JavaScript API. Positioning and venue maps, so uh, we have a lot of uh, buildings which are vectorized uh, by uh, indoor, so you can create indoor navigation. Uh, using positioning service you can uh, locate users of your applications uh, with high precise inside buildings based on Wi-Fi networks. Uh, and that's all I think that I wanted to share about our platform. Uh, you can answer you know, or questions about each of them. I can quickly describe it for you. Um, I didn't listen to you because I, I was preparing a quiz for you. But um, yeah. just one thing, it uh, it uses the same account for it, so I did it. You may probably mention it already somehow. Yes, 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 it's Perfect. the same. Um, so you can use it for whatever you want, basically. If you have your own project, uh, uh, it's obviously for free. I mean, for many users, uh, it can be easily for free. Uh, we do have lots of companies working with our data for free. <coughs> management companies and so on, so on. Um, in general uh, you can also we do have data from local providers like road admins municipalities public transit and so on so on uh, traffic uh, alerts which means traffic incidents plus uh, road constructions we have traffic real-time traffic from many many different providers even us so one if you use our app you can basically uh, choose if you want to share your location or not. Many people, I, I, it probably needs also some kind of um, explanation. In general, we don't use any private information. We just use location and that's it. and speed, which means uh, we don't know who what, who was that person, where that person goes, uh, and from where, because we somehow, you know. Uh, separate this kind of information from that and don't, nobody knows that. Um, so that's it. Any question? No. Still alive? <laughs> Perfect. Um, thank you, Maxim. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As I said at the very beginning, you can contact any one of us, basically use our names uh, like martin.svec at here.com or Maxim Makarov or Martin Svalines. Um,
if you have any questions, you can contact us even later, obviously, and so on. Mm, and now I have prepared a quiz for you. How good you were in listening. <coughs> Um, not sure. Or, or, but let's try. <laughs> now, <laughs> what No, no. Um, <coughs> you, you will have to use your phones. Hopefully, it will work. Let's. Do you know Kahoot, by the way? Kahoot. Everybody is registered? <coughs> Good. I like the music source. So, just like the reason. Uh, so let's start. Ready? Yeah. Obviously the fastest, uh, the fastest answer wins. Uh, you will have, there will be a question and four options, most of the time. There are ten, ten questions, so be ready. Let's start. 20 seconds for answer. Options? <coughs> Second, uh, uh, minutes. The the worst is Mumbai, obviously. Ninety. Uh, sorry. I already answered the next question. <laughs> um, never mind. So that was the start of question, but let's take another one. That's me. <laughs> Who's that person? By mistake, I ended up in that place. I was like, Ooh, I Next question. What's the worst city in the world when it comes to time spent in traffic? Mm -hmm. I 
just mentioned that, by the way. <laughs> uh, 91 minutes per 100 kilometers. Still leading. Ready for next next question? Yeah. True or false? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> but be creative. <laughs> okay, that person can leave the, the room, I guess. <laughs> Next question. Which city has the most efficient public transport? Zurich, New York, Paris, London. per stop, which means basically it stops by any potential means of transport. <coughs> Who is here, Nis? You are collaborating. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The largest per percentage of green places in the city. person. Oh. I guess you can go. Ready? <laughs> Next question. Ready? Where's the most expensive public transit in the world? In comparison to monthly salary. Sao Paulo. Almost 14 percent. So they spend roughly 14 percent of their salaries every month on public transport. In Singapore, it's around 4 percent. Do you want to know Copenhagen? I will tell you later if you want to. Next question. The highest number of EV charging stations in the city. Number. The highest density of docked city bikes per 1,000 people provided by municipality. <laughs> By the way, the second one is Barcelona, not Amsterdam, because obviously people have their own bikes. Yeah. In Brussels, it's around 4.2 bikes per 1,000. <laughs> Next one. Wow. <laughs> no. Very close. <laughs> 
which city has fully automated metro system? Two possible answers, by the way. Copenhagen, Vancouver, Singapore, Sydney. Copenhagen and Vancouver. Uh, Singapore is around 55%. Percent. Sydney is zero. And the last question. No, there will be the last question. Very tricky one. So be ready, and if you don't answer it correctly, I mean, even even you, fingers, we will not give you anything. <laughs> Again, more answers, obviously. <laughs> Not bad. So, uh, just to sum it up, basically, uh, you know what we do, you know why we do it, uh, you know how to use our data and what kind of data you can get out of us. Thank you very much. It's like endless. Endless. Uh, it's Christmas is coming. I thought that you would give it to your family. <laughs> Anyway, um, as I said, most of you are already working in some companies, probably somehow related to geography. Um, it's up to you. I mean, um, you can contact whoever you want I mean, from us, basically. Uh, if you need any, any, anything related to our data or um, collaboration, let's say, just let us know. Uh, I mean, when it comes to data, we also collaborate with universities. Uh, work with students, so if you have some, some let's say, group of students or uh, people who can, uh, who want to have some, let's say, practice or internship, it might be us. And that's it. We also have gifts for you, oh. too. <laughs> so thank you, guys. It yeah, was thank you really much. interesting for you, too. <laughs> thank you. I cannot actually. I fly tomorrow. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. Yeah. If you have uh, still questions, you can still approach us and ask. 
because I was I was answering someone someone's from municipality question for someone who left already. Maybe he would be staying. He would saw this uh, traffic. Uh, happy. Maybe maybe that answer. The answer. And uh, by the way, that video and uh, presentation should be posted as well for you, so you can find these links and find all the contacts if you need. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.